That's right. Well, big tech names remaining under pressure from D.C. this morning. Even as the stock's moving higher, the president continuing his assault on Jeff Bezos and Amazon over Twitter, while Mark Zuckerberg will be grilled in front of Congress next week on the Facebook data scandal. For all this and more, we're joined now by tech lobbyist Bruce Melman, founder and partner at Melman, Castagnetti, Rosen and Thomas in Washington. Uh, Bruce, thanks for joining us. Uh, such Thank an you. fascinating time for your business. What do you think the most important thing is for Facebook to address to minimize potential regulation or is regulation inevitable? Well, you know, uh, you're right. Both Facebook and Amazon, as well as a lot of other folks in tech, uh, have concerns. And, and writ large, the challenge is the most powerful companies on the planet are the least regulated. And at least historically, that can never stand. Facebook, uh, a lot of the coverage, frankly, has a forest and a trees problem. Folks, uh, in the hearing next week, and a lot of the coverage seemed to focus merely on the 2016 elections. Uh, I think a lot of the Democrats are going to try to establish uh, that uh, Facebook was somehow a tool used by Russian uh, online uh, agents to influence the elections. You're going to hear uh, challenges to that, as well as questions about uh, whether or not conservative voices have a uh, have a fair shake and a fair platform on social media. But. But the broader question, the, the, the forest question for Facebook uh, is the fact that they have extraordinary user data on more than two billion individuals. And we users of Facebook, and I'm a, I'm a fan, I use it all the time and I like it, but I am not their customer, I'm their product. And ultimately the conversation is going to move to broader questions of who really ought to own the data. Uh, you're seeing in Europe already questions of whether you ought to have the right to remove data or the right to see what they have on you. I don't think we're going to have legislative action in 2018 on that question, but the conversation uh, will only grow from here. Now, yesterday, Zuckerberg said that he's going to have Facebook, uh, Facebook tools around the world comply with those stricter European privacy regulations that are going to be put into place next month. You said we're not going to have regulation this year, but do you think that the companies can be pushed to change dramatically the way it handles data in a way that could really impact its business model? Well, for sure, the company is already being pushed, and the pushes are going to grow uh, to have consumers get greater control over their data. Again, the thought that Cambridge Analytica situation was a data breach is frankly not as honest about the situation as it should be. Uh, the reality is a lot of the things that Cambridge Analytica did in 2016, for which they're being excoriated, were hallmarks of the 2012 Obama campaign, for which he was celebrated. Now, there's a big difference in the exfiltration of the data and whether or not uh, it was done within or outside of the rules. But more broadly, uh, social media platforms such as Facebook allow far more precise advertising, far more effective advertising, what they call psychographic profiling of uh, voters. And the 2012 Obama campaign was still one of the all-time great efforts at psychographic profiling of consumers. That's Facebook's value proposition. It's why their uh, valuation is so extraordinarily high. And the question yeah. becomes, as we all learn what they're really doing, do we care? And do policymakers add a lot of friction? Bruce, I want to get your thoughts on Amazon. Given the presidential tweet storm we've seen over the past week and really over the past year plus, uh, the fact that Jeff Bezos and Amazon have remained largely silent, you think that's the right move? Well, you know, I think they have a, a different challenge. Theirs is a signal and a noise challenge. Uh, the noise has always been the president's tweets, uh, and whether it's about post office or the media is characterizing this as billionaire versus billionaire. The reality is Amazon had already grown to one of the lob largest lobby shops in Washington for a very real reason before this year, well before any tweets about Amazon. Uh, they've got several challenges. First, you've got the, the U.S. retail problem. We're seeing retailers being put out of business. Uh, Walmart used to get picked on because they'd move in and they'd hire people in town and they'd compete with local retailers. You're seeing local retailers getting eviscerated, but, Wal but Amazon's not moving in. They're just taking the business. Yeah. Number okay. two, uh, you see questions about uh, taxes that they, that they pay or that they don't pay, and their business model was growth, not revenue, and not income, and not, therefore not taxes. But even bigger is the question of cloud. And, and you already had seen most across industry objecting to the apparent plans for the Department of Defense to let a 10 or 15 billion dollar contract to Amazon to provide a single cloud as opposed to an industry best practice uh, for an organization to have multiple clouds. 
Well, Bruce, um, thank you so much for your thoughts. It'll be fascinating to see how this all plays out, including Thanks next for having week. me.